Um, Michael, I've been meaning to ask, there were comments about transubstantiation that Peter Diamond has used as an argument against you. <laughs> Any comments? Something about swallowing a kneecap. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like I've already clarified this, not only on Twitter, because um, <clears throat> I explained what I meant. So anybody who actually read me in context knows what I meant. Uh, but I've also answered it on YouTube. But in summary, I'm proposing the teaching of the Council of Trent. Shocking, right? I'm maintaining that we use the language of the Council of Trent. Shocker, right? Um, it's amazing that I can literally appeal to the Council of Trent, its language, and insist that we use its language and its theology, and that somebody would twist that to accuse me of heresy. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm saying is this. Some people sometimes say we literally eat the body of Christ. And I want to say that's not the best phrase. That's not the best way to put it. Because that could mean one of two things. It could mean something that's true, or it could also mean something that's heterodox. And it could also be very misleading to people. When we say literally, for non-Catholics who don't know about transubstantiation and don't know what we're saying, that's going to sound like something ridiculous, like we're cannibals. Like we have blood gushing out of our mouths when we receive the Eucharist and we're gnawing on the kneecap. That's what I was referring to. And I think we all grant that that's absurd, right? Because what we're, we still receive the accidents, the appearances of bread and wine. We substantially, truly, and really receive Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity under the appearances of bread and wine. That's transubstantiation, and that's the language of Trent. Trent doesn't say literally. It doesn't say that. It says truly and really. And I want to say, let's use that because people are going to get confused if we say literally. People who are not Catholics, who don't know about Catholicism, they're going to get confused. It could mean that we're truly receiving Christ. That, that's often what I think Catholics mean when you have, whenever you see people on like Facebook say, we literally receive the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. I think that they're just saying we truly receive. And okay, that's fine. That's orthodox. That's what Trent says. But I fear that the average person doesn't know that and they're going to be confused and think that we're talking about cannibalism and they're going to say that's absurd. And rightly so, that is absurd. But that's not what we're saying. Um, so rather than, of you know, rather than going through that whole problem, let's just avoid it by not using that language of literally. And rather, let's use the language of the Council of Trent, truly and really. That's all I was saying. And when I said we don't literally swallow a kneecap, I'm talking about under the accidents, the appearances. I literally don't have a kneecap that I'm gnawing on. I'm, I'm eating as far as physically the accidents, right? And I'm receiving the substance, substance of Christ, uh, substantially, the body, blood, soul, and divinity, which includes bones and sinew but substantially, not accidentally. We do not accidentally eat bone and sinew. We substantially eat bone and sinew. You understand? That's what I was saying. And some people are like, oh, but, but Trent says we receive the bone and sinew. Well, first of all, it's not Trent that says that. That's what blows me away, is that they confuse the Catechism of the Council of Trent with Trent. Trent did not say that. The Catechism of the Council of Trent said that. And it's right. It's referring to the substance that we're receiving. We're substantially receiving bone and sinew. We're not accidentally receiving bone and sinew. If you say we're accidentally receiving bone and sinew, you're a heretic. You're denying transubstantiation. You're a heretic. So the irony here is I'm accused of heterodoxy by literally maintaining the orthodox teaching of transubstantiation and my accusers, who are ag going against what I'm saying, would have to adopt a heterodox view to oppose what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is Peter Diamond has to adopt a heterodox view of transubstantiation um, if he's going to oppose what I said, because what I said is 
100% orthodox. It's exactly what transubstantiation is, according to the Council of Trent. Um, and again, I do accept the catechism of the Council of Trent, but that's not the same as the Council of Trent. Get it straight. Don't confuse the two. The catechism of the Council of Trent was not written by the Council of Trent. It's written afterwards, not by the Council. The Council of Fathers wanted a catechism, but it was not written by the Council of Fathers. Um, again, I accept it. I'm just saying that we need to be careful not to conflate the two. Um, but everything that the Council of Trent says on transubstantiation is reconcilable with what the Catechism is saying and is also reconcilable with what I was saying. Now, what happens is, is people on Twitter, instead of reading my sub-threads and seeing what I was saying, they did not do that. They just immediately read the one thread. And you can only type in so many characters on Twitter. I can't give you that long explanation that I just gave to you right now in video in Twitter in, in one tweet, right? I mean, maybe in 50 tweets I can do that, but not in one tweet. And unfortunately, people jump the gun, people who are rash, who wanted to say, look at Michael, see how heterodox he is. They were looking for something to criticize. Instead of using the judgment of charity, seeing the rest of what I said, and they would have understood then what I was saying. They just said, oh, but you see this one tweet, and then took it out of context and ran with it and started promoting it. And then Peter Diamond starts promoting it and others start promoting it. And all the people who have been criticizing my position um, on, let's say, the, the Novus Ordo or Pope Francis or the Magisteria, those who already kind of were disposed to try to look for something to critique with me because they don't like what I say, jumped on it and used it. And I thought that that was sinful behavior. It was irrational. Um, it was interesting also because, once again, if you're going to oppose what I was saying, it, it would actually be you who's heterodox because I was literally maintaining the position of Trent. Um, <clears throat> so I found it to be fascinating, but I also just said, you know what, if this is how people are going to consistently behave on Twitter, I'm just not going to be on Twitter anymore because I'm not going to go back and forth with people on Twitter explaining why what I just said is orthodox in a, in a tweet on my phone. I'm not just going to do that. And then I would explain it to one person and there would be other people who would come and ask me the same question because they didn't read already on Twitter where I responded. So a million other people with the same answer. I'm not going to continue to do that. That's a waste of my time. So I just said, eh, Twitter's not worth it because the little interaction that I was getting was just from trolls like that, people who are not of goodwill, people who are just looking for something to criticize, looking for something to jump on, looking for something to say, see, he's heterodox. Um, I, I felt like that's just a waste of time. So I just got off Twitter. So yeah. Um, pray for the people who are, are sharing that and, you know, share, share lies and bear falsehood, um, or bear false witness. It's, it's a serious sin and we need to pray for them. So pray for Peter Diamond and others who are perpetuating, um, that lie and bearing false witness against, uh, against someone. Oh wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless.